56 because we are subtracting the five dead and the three recovered okay. from the confirmed cases. So now we have 196 active cases that we are managing as a country. So basically, that is the update. Today at the presser, there was no um, change, mm -hmm. um, but there was a bit of hope because if you look at the figures we are looking at for those responding to treatment, um, it, it, it gives me hope that things will get better as we go ahead. Look, in the routine surveillance, we have 87 people responding to treatment. In the mandatory quarantine, we have 48 people responding to treatment. Mm -hmm. The Guineans and the Burkinabes who were also um, intercepted in the northern region, um, there were 10. One ran away, um, nine are still in, 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 in holding. And we on the recovery side of things. Okay. Yeah, so um, basically that is the data now. 18 people in the routine surveillance have been discharged and they are being managed at home. 31 in the mandatory quarantine have been discharged. They are being managed at home. The discharge means that they are at an advanced level of recovery, which mm -hmm. means that once they go through the two-week period and they are tested, it's likely they are going to be tested negative. Okay. That's also going to see our recovery charts going up Mm -hmm. which is um, which should be good news for us so if you are able to ensure that there is no spread we carry out the test we may see new cases but this what this data tells me is that if we keep on keeping on these cases we have that are responding to treatment and that have been discharged are mm -hmm. going to recover mm -hmm. and we are going to see some hope then we would have space to manage what is left and if we don't see new cases then we may have to uh, to deal with some more issues. Okay. So basically Raising the, the issue time. about if people don't stay home forces me to go to the issue about the lockdown and its effectiveness over the period. Today, it appears that a lot of people in town. It doesn't look like there's really a lockdown in, in, in enforcement and all that. So look, you're just coming in from outside. Was it the same? Well, um, it's an interesting point you made uh, because my observation as I was driving through town was uh, a number of the checkpoints were not where they were. Mm -hmm. If even the, bar the, the barriers or the barricades were there, the, 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 the personnel were a bit relaxed. Yeah. So, like yesterday and the day before, I, I wasn't stopped you know, so many times. Like, in fact, I wasn't stopped at all. Mm. Um, I wasn't stopped at all. So I was just thinking to myself, maybe they don't want to be predictable. Maybe they, 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 I mean, they understand that they have to do this with a humanitarian face, etc. Mm -hmm. And I also think maybe part of the strategy is because of the nature of the lockdown and because of the economic situation generally, uh, they will want to every now and then relax things a bit so people can get out and get stuff. But that will not be announced. Mm -hmm. So th that's just my thinking. So, so it's an interesting point you made. I, I realized that. But I didn't know it, it, was, it was a general situation. So, 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 did, yeah. so staying with that, I want you guys to see a video. Early this morning, we went to town because we were alarmed by the numbers we're seeing, especially in the markets. So we asked Caleb Kuda to go to some of the markets in Accra and look at what is happening there. It appears most people are restocking today. So huge numbers of the market. So let's go to Blue Way Market, where Caleb Kuda visited early this morning. And this is what he can report. Every account, the police people know we're allowed to look for here. So that's why I'm here at the camp park for here. That's why I'm coming here at the camp next month. I'll close maybe nine. Yeah, I'll close nine. 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 I'll close n
said it today, smaller markets, Mala markets, Malata markets, uh, Anya markets. So the police people have stopped them. When they enter the markets, everything's gone. Mm -hmm. So when you reach here, then they will stop you. Mm -hmm. They will stop you. You will not enter. So that's actually the Brewery Market. It's The name has been... Um, you know, turned corrupted, corrupted to uh, blue way, blue way, brew way. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just in brew, Accra. Brew, brew. If, if you go to Kumasi, where there's so Coca Cola the and Kumasi breweries, yeah, yeah, yeah. we would say we are called brew way. Yeah. <laughs> so the R has become L, and it was has become R. So yeah. it is actually brewing market, and, and most of the market women call it the blue way market. So, guys, you see a huge crowd over there. Yet again, concerns about social distancing and information enforcement and all that. Today, if you look at some of the cars, you see five people and all that, the police will say, I don't practice in social, but they allow them to go. Are we relaxing? Is it because it's Friday? I, I don't know. What's the sense in yes, what the, is the, the, today? The, the pictures I've seen this week from some of the markets, from Dr. videos from Medina. It shows that in some of the markets, very little is being done to ensure social distancing. In fact, on Wednesday at the um, Dr. Mesa market, some of the traders nearly fought some of the security men, mm. right? Because the security men wanted to enforce the social distancing, but they didn't want to. In some of the markets, we've been told that um, some of the traders are losing their food stuff because they are thieves who are stealing their yeah, food stuff. Yeah, a lot of looting going so, on. So, 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 so it's a big issue to be looked at. It also shows somehow that maybe the education hasn't got, gotten down very well okay. to some of the market women and a lot of the people going to the markets. Because it's not just the market women who are not um, um, observing the physical distancing. People buying also are not observing the physical distancing, which is something we should be worried about. We may have closed our airports and our borders, and we may not import cases. But the figures we are seeing show that the routine maintenance cases, the routine um, surveillance cases, mm -hmm. are higher than the mandatory, yeah. those we blocked from coming in. Mm -hmm. So it should give us a cause to, to be worried. And so everybody within that market ecosystem must start playing their role. We must ensure and enforce the physical distancing. The situation we find ourselves in is such that we still would have to allow certain things to happen, mm -hmm. like restricted as access to the markets for people to restore, for people to get um, stuff to buy. Because you, we, we saw the woman in the video. She's a market woman who herself has run out of supplies. Yeah. And she's run out of money. So these things are expected. But we need to be as strict as possible with this. Because if we don't do it, this freedom we're enjoying now we may not get to enjoy this freedom in two weeks' time okay. because things may get worse. So every player should, should, should play a role. If you are going to the market, ensure that you, the individual going to buy, you are practicing some amount of physical distancing. Mm -hmm. If you are selling in the market, ensure you are practicing physical distancing. The market authorities, the market queens, and the local assemblies, they need to... If, if it means that we have to draw lines and draw spaces for people to work in, we have to because we've seen it in Accra before where market women used to sell on pavements mm -hmm. and we had cause to draw a red line so that if you cross that red line, you'll be lashed or mm -hmm. your things will be confiscated. That was to um, 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 manage congestion. We've moved on from there to a global pandemic which threatens him to prevent time in this country are the markets. Mm -hmm. So those are the areas that present a lot of threat to us when it comes to spread. Mm -hmm. We've news for spread. We've eliminated churches. We've em eliminated funerals and mocks. We've mm -hmm. eliminated um, weddings and other social events. Now the only socio-economic structure that draws people together in one space are the markets. Mm -hmm. And you need to be as strict as possible so that we prevent spread and ensure that we win this fight. But the, the other areas that are also well, quite um, dense, like the, the slums, and not even the slums, some areas. Now, if you go to Accra proper, which I visited today, the Jamestown areas, the Bukom, and the, 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 the um, outlook of those places are 
small houses, but a lot of people. So really, it's difficult to practice social distancing over there, isn't it? We have a huge challenge with this social distancing. And if it strikes one person there, that's it going all around. So realistically, this social distancing thing, shouldn't we relook at the strategy that we want to implement than just to say, okay, social distancing, separate yourself, when in reality, if you look at those areas and that stretch all the way to the coast, that is what we are saying in terms of how they live. Well, interesting again, Vivian. Um, you, you see, our society hasn't been built for this so close to each other. We want to speak into somebody's ears. We want to gossip, and you don't scream at gossip and, and, and that kind of thing. And if you are buying something, you want to get close to the person, you want to bargain. Sometimes you don't want other people to hear yeah. what you are offering for it, etc. So that has been our nature. Now comes COVID-19, so we all have to readjust. We are trying, but we may not be there yet. We are a communal people. I have seen the concerns, social distancing, you know, we talk about two meters, but two meters is quite, it's, it's quite some distance. Three of that is you know, somebody's house. You know, yeah. it's quite some <laughs> distance. So I, I think uh, what I have been thinking about in the last few days is that we should find a way of reintroducing the discussion on face masks. You know, I think City has started something like that. Yeah. We should reintroduce that. We may not all have the N95 or so face mask, which we are told is, is, is the best of foolproof kind of face mask. But no matter how it is, it, it helps, you know, provide some barrier between mm -hmm. you and the next person and, and, and may prevent a few things from getting through. It may depend on its permeability, but by and large, it will be able to sieve out some of the viruses maybe. I think that should really be where the discussion is. And, and, and sometimes I'm tempted to think that the use of face masks for the general public was discarded from the beginning because of the shortage. Mm -hmm. And I think by now we're getting a lot of it in the system. We need to get back to the discussion of face masks. When you, 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 I don't see how we can you know, really enforce the, the social, social distancing. distancing. We can only try, we can only advise. Talking even about trotro, mm -hmm. how, how big is a trotro? Now we say we shouldn't take three people or on 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 uh, on the row or on the seat, yeah. but how how wide is it? Mm -hmm. When when I sit here at the other corner, the other person sits at the other corner. The distance is not only two meters. meters. Yes. So uh, I I think we really need to vi revisit it. Social distancing is good when you can, fine. But the discussion about the face mask uh, uh, should really be be, be vi revisited. I've seen people use handkerchiefs and other things to cover their faces. It may not serve as a face mask you know, properly so-called, but it does help in offering some barrier and some minimal protection. And in my view, it's better than nothing. Yeah. Because we we may try to enforce a social distance. And I don't even know how we can legislate that or get military people or police people to enforce that as we are enforcing the, the, the law. I think introducing or reintroducing the discussion on the face mask will do us a lot of good. Okay. You've been pushing for this face mask since yes, last year. Yes, 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 yes. And, and I think... In, in the mix of strategies to deal with um, COVID-19 in Ghana and around the world. Because look, global numbers have crossed one million, million people. Yeah. One million people. That's, that's a huge number. That's like um, the Savannah region plus some other region population. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's a big number. So as the spread continues, there, 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 there's going to be more uh, um, 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 we are going to be affected in different areas. Mm. Economies will slow down, production will slow down. So we may not even get the companies and the factories that can produce the right yeah. things for us. So we need to be innovative and use what we have. I think that this fabric, if I cut a, a piece of it and have three layers of this fabric, and, and in between this, I put in what you ladies use for your lining, for your, mm -hmm. your cover and slit, yeah. <clears throat> it should give me enough layers of protection at least if i'm a carrier and i'm coughing and sneezing it could trap whatever i am getting out putting out so it's it's a level of protection so mm -hmm. it may not be like this mask but it will do some work but as much as possible Selom, i also think that even though our system is what it is we can still enforce some amount of social distancing even in the markets mm -hmm. even in the markets and and i said this yesterday in every market in this country, there's a structure. Mm -hmm. In every market in this country, there's a structure. There are market women, 
there are sections within the market where they sell specific things that have their leadership. So there's a structure. We need to understand that structure, which I know we do because the local assemblies work with the markets a lot. Mm -hmm. We need to use that structure to enforce and design our own kind of social distancing for the markets. Okay. Because the thing is, the, the areas you mentioned, you mentioned Choco, you mentioned Jamestown, you're mentioning Nima and all these areas. There are the people who patronize these markets in their neighborhoods. So if we don't ensure social distancing and there's a spread in those areas, because of the population densities and everything, spread would be there. Because if you go to the affluent places, somebody sits on a 100 by 100 piece of land. It's just him, his wife, and a child, or two, four people. Hmm. In that, on that same 100 by 100 piece of land in, in a place like Bantama, or Enima, or Aja, or um, um, any of the places, you'd have about 40, 50 people mm -hmm. in that space. Mm -hmm. 12 rooms, each room like six people sometimes. Yeah. So we need to ensure that we use the structures, the local and the traditional structures we have to ensure the social distancing. We have chiefs and traditional authorities who in certain places have a lot of power and respect. We have our religious leaders mm -hmm. who have a lot of power and respect. We have politicians who have power and respect. Let's use all the avenues available to us to, to impress upon people to understand the gravity of the situation we are in. And let's also use the power of the states as, 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 as given to the agencies by law to ensure strict adherence to social distancing because this is a war. Mm -hmm. We are not buying bullets or, or shooting bullets and tear gas and all that, but we yeah, are really fighting a war. enemy, yeah. Okay, right. So, with um, regards to um, protective um, equipment, I want us to stick with that. You know, yesterday, the um, some doctors from Kolobu threatened to, you know, withdraw their services if they are not protected well enough. Today's press, I looked at that concern and the issue about us um, giving frontline um, workers, we, and plus health workers especially, the protective equipment. So I want us to go to that press, uh, the Director General of um, um, the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Abwaji, spoke on that matter. Let's pick that quickly and then we'll look at the, the points he's raising. PPEs remain a major challenge for all of us. And I think it's not just Ghana, but it's a global challenge. Um, we continue to provide as many as can be pushed and put in the this and more continues coming in. We have received a significant number of coveralls that is being distributed today and some masks uh, last night, which has been distributed. But these are definitely not going to be enough. And so we urge facility heads to come and show appropriate distribution of the masks. Generally, majority of our people who just need masks, nose masks, and gloves. And that's what we're going for more than 95, 98% of all health workers. We want to ensure that that's available. We've started the process of um, having some local production of one, and what I'm wearing is a local production that um, is comfortable, it can be washed and rear. And I think this is something we want to promote. We want to ensure, encourage all people to wear masks, if you can, especially those who have flu-like symptoms, to wear masks. But the person has problem who should wear their own masks to ensure that these things are done. So a lot more is being done to push more PPEs into the system. And there are plans to provide local uh, production to boost uh, what we are bringing in currently. I can speak for health workers. We had encouraged all to come up with their ID cards, and for those who did not, who had lost their ID cards, we created an opportunity by the weekend for them to get up there, get their ID cards. We are asking and encouraging all facilities where they can arrange transport to pick people from the vantage points. We are engaging their associations, our the middle associations, and these things are ongoing to ensure that we find out solution to these ones. On the issue of ventilators, I think we need to be very careful. Um, people are branding figures, all kinds of experts are branding figures everywhere. But it's a projection based on where you get to, how many bad cases you are going to get. And so you can add, raise up to 200 ventilators, and I mentioned some of them. We have th uh, 307 ambulances that has uh, ventilators, and in the event of challenge, we could assess them and to use. 
we are putting in the procurement of 50 additional ventilators. And as you are aware, even if you have money, it's not easy to get a ventilator these days. And 20 are in. And we are hoping that as the situation, as the forecast, we will continue to ensure that with time, uh, production will be enhanced and we'll have access to more ventilators when they are needed. Right. So, first issue, the PPEs, we've started production, even brought in some local uh, companies to help with this production for, to ensure that most people get these PPEs as much as possible. Yeah, and um, he, 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 he alluded to the fact that beyond the fact that we, can, we may not get the, the, the properly so-called technically mm -hmm. um, approved um, um, PPEs, mm -hmm. So when we are talking about PPEs, face marks are one. Yeah. He, he said we could make our own PPEs, we could wash them and reuse, so that at least you have a barrier, um, a minimal barrier in place, which I believe is a good thing. Now, he also mentioned that even if you have money, globally, there's a shortage. Mm -hmm. So we need to be innovative with what yeah. we have, and that they had started distributing to the healthcare workers. I don't know the type of communication that is happening within the healthcare system. Because every day we get assurances from the authorities that we are taking care of the healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. But every other day too, we hear we complaints hear them agitating. from the healthcare workers. Yeah. From the first day the president spoke about this, the president has had four different addresses on COVID-19. And I remember all the assurances he's giving that we are doing everything we can to provide PPEs for healthcare workers. So I, I, I also want to urge the... Ghana Health Service Administration to also talk to the leadership of the various facilities mm -hmm. to bring their workers up to date with whatever is happening. You see, sometimes when things are happening, there's one thing with you getting updates and information to make you rest assured that even though our situation is bad, something is being done. And there's one thing having this vacuum created where you don't know what to do. Then they come on social media to write and they approach the media. So whatever distribution strategy is there, we should let every healthcare worker, every frontline person, every facility know what to do and what to communicate to their staff so they know what to expect. Because when they are there and they don't know what to expect, you don't yeah, know what to expect when it comes to your protection. Yeah. And you also don't know what to expect when it comes to a patient coming to your hospital with mm -hmm. COVID-19 mm -hmm. uh, uh, positive. Yeah. So we need to ensure that the communication goes down to them so at least they'll rest assured of what to do. I think that is really key. The other thing is also with the funding related issues. Yesterday, the World Bank released a statement that they were going to give the government of Ghana $100 million, mm -hmm. and that $35 million is going to go into the immediate COVID-19 response. So that is some funding coming in. So we should be strategic with the money. Um, this is also a good opportunity to start putting some of our funds in local companies because mm -hmm. the global manufacturers are struggling. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot when it comes to um, um, fabric and textile and related businesses. Ghana is one of the hubs yeah. because we have a lot of companies that can do something in this area. Let's have our innovators, let's have our smart people put together quick, quick designs. And let's give the funding to these companies to make as many face masks and as many PPEs as possible so that at least in the face of the global crunch, mm -hmm we circulate the money within our economy. We do not take all the money out. Outside, right. Salam. Yes, I mean, the, the issue about um, PPEs or, yeah, or apparel, uh, it's not just a Ghanaian problem. In India, there's a, there's, 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 there's a whole storm there with the healthcare providers because of the inadequacy or the insufficiency of the, of the PPEs. Uh, like I said yesterday, the press statement or the, the document, the press document, from the doctors didn't have to get to the point where it had to get to the media. Like Oji Riley said, we need to help it. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you know what the reality is and you also know that there, there's a lot of effort being put or being made in between to help address it, you know, though you are concerned or worried, you are a bit tamed because you know that the, the people in charge are doing their, their best possible. Yeah. But they wouldn't know that if the communications lines are not open, if you leave them in the dark, because they are the guys at the front line, and you are someone making policy or making decisions. If you don't know what your real difficulties are, they will think you are deliberately starving them of something. 
the issue of PPEs, I think it also provides an opportunity for local production. We've seen what the, 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 the Ghanaian ingenuity can do when, when we came to the hand sanitizers. About two, three days into this fight, we realized that hand sanitizers were, were, were finished in the system mm -hmm. and, and people hacked up prices, etc., made a lot of money around those times. Two, three days later, we saw a lot of local production. It might not have met the best branding yeah. standards, etc. But by and large, they, they, <laughs> they, they tried, you know. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of the sanitizers we have in the system today are locally produced. And then a, few, a lot of people have been producing some at, at home and various places. That is how we should do it. Producing face masks, I, I don't know what goes into the production of face masks and, and, and PPEs, but I don't think it's beyond the Ghanaian. You know, given that given certain minimum circumstances or conditions, I'm not sure it's beyond Ghanaian pharmaceutical companies, for example. You look at Poku Pharma, you look at Danex, you look at Starwin, you look at uh, uh, um, NS Chemist, NS you look at all these people. They produce drugs which go around the world. So I don't think it is beyond them at all. What is important is what they've been crying for all along the attention from policymakers, attention from government. And I think this gives both sides a good opportunity. Government can say, this is what you've been crying for. You've always been crying for the attention. Here you are, have the attention, have the resources, and let's see what you can do. It also gives them an opportunity to show to the powers that be that this is what we wanted, and you've given it to us, now we have delivered. So that if COVID-19, hopefully so, you know, uh, uh, um, vanishes or, or leaves the system, in the next few weeks, we pray so, mm. we would have developed local capacity. Yeah. We would have developed capacity for the production of some of these things so that the powers that be again will frustrate the importation of these goods into the system. And, and, and the long-term effect of it will, is that it will help our economy. It will help stabilize our currency. It will do a lot of things to us, including building the confidence of the Ghanaian entrepreneur. We need that. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, with this, it, sometimes there are soft issues. The confidence matter. Or you go to town and everything you buy is, is from outside. Yeah. It, it's, it weakens your confidence as a Ghanaian, what you can do as a Ghanaian. But if you, if you go to the pharmacy or you go to the market, and, and you can imagine if all the PPEs that we'll be using in Ghana, you know, were produced in Ghana. It, it's an opportunity to do this. We say that necessity is a matter of all inventions. Yeah. Necessity should push us to, to put on our thinking caps and, and put on our patriotic cups and do what is right. Importing everything from our side, we have said mm -hmm. many times, we've paid lip service to it, it is not helping, but the will to frustrate it is not there. I think given the situation that COVID-19 has uh, brought, I mean, where production in that part of the country, you know, is, is gone down and so we are unable to get many things into the country, this is the opportunity to build local capacity and, and I think we'll be happy for it in the future. Okay. Transport. Now, during the press, it was also announced that um, health workers will now be picked um, from Monday when they finish their ID uh, and process and all that. Good. Is this a, a doable thing? Well, it's, it's, it's a doable thing. Um, there are resources, mm. abundant resources to deal with this. You, you, you believe so? Yes. We had asked um, Ayalolo, for example, to deal with some part of the transportation, but we forgot or we failed to give them the resources to carry it out. And we do this, who is going to be contracted to be doing this transport thing? Well, Realistically. well we, we, we all agree that we are fighting a war, right? Mm. So in this case, we have to pull all the resources available to do this. And your question was, is this dual, there is metro mass? Which belongs to the states even if metro mass cannot be used to do this almost every region and the greater accra region has a school bus mm -hmm. almost private every or school. public i mean both private and public oh, so we're going even, to get re those. even recently mm -hmm. the ministry of education delivered new buses to to the institutions and new vehicles right mm -hmm. the military they have buses the police service they have buses i'm just saying if we needed resources to run this okay. we have the resources what we need to do is to decide to do it and have a working plan in place where we are going to pick the, 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 the people the, the from, people from the well, timing, the yeah. scheduling and everything. We just need to identify that. And the communication to the people, the communication to the people. I, 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 I believe that even this thing about picking health service staff, most of them heard it from the presser. Yes. But in instances like this, it would have been pre-planned 
and communicated to them so that the populace will know that yes indeed you asked for it but we are doing it mm -hmm. but you can also say that this is a situation we've not dealt with before no country has dealt with COVID-19 before mm -hmm. so it's a new situation we are dealing yeah. with but as much as possible we've we've crossed a week um, our first case was two weeks ago or three weeks ago 12. yes 12th 12. March so we've, we've, we've done some days so we should be able to plan better to ensure that we meet the needs of those who we have to take care of because it's just not right mm -hmm. for healthcare service people to be turned away because look we've spoken to some of them we've seen videos of some of them they get to a police barrier they show ID cards and they're still not allowed yeah. in yeah. Um, churches are unsafe for them mm -hmm. so some of them have resorted to taking taxis and they, they are spending so spending much money on transportation yeah. I believe that the, the courtesies we accord to people, institutions, groups and agencies when we feel they are working in the interest of the states. For example, if the black stars are going to play any game, hmm. the courtesies we afford them, hotel accommodation, transportation, feeding and all those things. Yeah. We should be able to put some of these courtesies, at least transportation in place for our healthcare service, uh, healthcare delivery people. We should be able to feed them because if you go to a lot of the hospitals and the clinics, they have um, 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 pantries or um, kitchens or cafeteria that cook. But what I've observed is that a lot of them cook for patients. They don't necessarily cook for, for staff. staff yeah. So staff would always have to go and find their food. Mm -hmm. But this is not a time to let anybody go out to look for food. Yeah. Where are the food vendors? Do that vitalize and come back the following morning to save lives. Okay. Um, is this doable? <laughs> Very doable, and I'm even surprised it, it's not been done yet. Mm. Transportation, CCTFM, there's a way that people who work deep in the night, who don't have their own means of transportation, are taken home. Those who work very early in the morning are done. Deep in There's the night, school. these I mean, days everybody you know, is picked. Is picked. And even, yeah, because you know, of the COVID, yes. Man, so everybody is fed. So, so, and so, everybody is fed. This is, so, so this is CTFM. Yeah. It's a private entity, of course. There's a difference between a private entity and, and a public entity. Yeah. A lot of people do it. A lot of media houses I know do that. It, it's, it's an issue of leadership. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes a lot of our leaders lack project management skills. I consider this uh, the system that the circumstances we find ourselves today as a kind of a project that we are managing. Resource allocation. We need to know how to think outside the box. Kolibu has a number of buses, mini buses and big buses. By now, every department should know where their people live. So you, you may not be able to pick everybody from their house, but let people maybe walk five, ten minutes to a certain junction mm -hmm. at a certain time, pick them up from there. This should be simple. This should not be something that the whole nation should be discussing. The leaders in those institutions, this is a time for them to, 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 to stand and get counted. If maybe the situation is such that you don't have enough buses or resources in this respect, there are many, many, many public institutions with these urban buses, mini buses, that have been packed because public institutions are not working. Yeah. It is very easy for the health minister to speak to his colleague ministers and heads of institutions to release those vehicles. Education alone I mean, can sort they, us out. They, they fuel it and yeah. they use it for that. So I, I don't see why we should wait for this to become an issue. And I said it before, that we don't have to let this be, to become the, 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 the news. I mean, we are all engaged in trying to help the situation, trying to fight the common enemy, COVID-19. Transportation allowance, I mean, transportation, <laughs> things, PPEs, they, they yeah. should not take Feeding their attention the away. The, the, it, it, it shouldn't the be. Poor. Even the, 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 the soldiers and the, I mean, the, the security personnel on the road were saying yesterday that they also have to be looked at. Yeah. Being provided with basic protection Rushes. kits, yeah. you know, face masks, face etc. Masks, yeah. Sometimes the they are gloves, not covered. Yeah. They talk to you and then you, you, you go. And, we need to get these things right. It's, 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 it's too strenuous talking about this at this time when you expect that leaders in those institutions in this moment in our history must be able to think outside the box and put out solutions. We are not in normal times. So if on, on a daily basis the people ordinarily go home on their own, this time should be different because the enemy we are confronting is different. Mm -hmm. We need the healthcare workers to be at work at a certain time. We don't want them to be telling us that they were late because they didn't get a car. And that would be justifiable because many cars are not working. 
and, and or they will say they didn't have money to take uber or to take taxi that's why they are late we don't want that make life a bit comfortable for them let them feel respected let them feel appreciated in this time they will give up their best even going <laughs> through the, the the public transport as um, frontline workers health workers at this time with this virus it's not, not even it's, safe it's, 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 not, it's not safe so today too they revealed that um, samples of over 6,000 people who are identified through contact tracing have been taken you know over just this um, um, few days could you yeah and over 3,000 teams uh, 300 teams working to take the samples and it looks like a lot of work is being done um, a lot of um, people have been put on the on in the communities to do the sample testing but I think one thing needs to be said <clears throat> we as a people we need to change our mindset about people who test positive for COVID-19 people who recover people who have lost their family members <clears throat> to COVID-19 it's just not right look Somebody sent us um, a WhatsApp message, and his major concern was that yesterday he lives in an area, and then they came to test him. <coughs> they came to test him. Now, after the test, he is afraid to tell his family that they've come to test him. He's afraid to tell his neighbors that he's been tested. Yeah. He's afraid to tell his colleagues at work that he's been tested. He's been home for the past three weeks. He's not gone out, but his area is one of the. Um, rest zones. So he's been tested. <laughs> so here is a case somebody doesn't want to let people know. If he were not disciplined mm. and maybe he had he had tested positive and gone out, this person could could yeah. could spread. You understand? Yeah. So let's all know that COVID nineteen it's a killer disease. It will kill you. It can kill you. It's like malaria. It's like T B. It's like any other disease. But we can manage it. Mm -hmm. So once somebody gets it, it doesn't mean you should stigmatize the person or treat the person anyhow. You could also to exist, whether they are positive or negative. And let's do what we can do on our own to prevent the spread. Because look, 6,000 um, samples taken, 3,000 people out doing the testing. If we stigmatize people, and some of them, you know sometimes when you are stigmatized so much, and you, 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 you get hurt, that hurt becomes anger. And some people may try to punish the society yeah. by stepping out there. Mm -hmm. it, it does happen sometimes. So let's just be supportive. If you know somebody who has tested posit positive, if you know people in the red zones who are being tested, be supportive. An encouraging word, a, a nice text message, a nice call to just keep them. Look, today when the psychologist was speaking, he says so many things yeah. that as a society we usually overlook. Mm -hmm. And those are things we should not overlook. The emotional support we give to others gives them the strength even to fight this. So we, 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 we need to, as much as possible as a people, be supportive. We shouldn't stigmatize people. We should also be honest. When the people come to us and ask us questions, we should give them the truth, the right answers, so that they will do the right contact tracing, so that we get the right results, so that we can test as many people as possible, so that we can fight this as fast as possible, for life to uh, to return to normal. Okay, so I don't know whether you want to comment on the tests, and if not, we'll move to the, uh, the well, lockdown. Yeah, okay, let's talk. Let's go to okay. The so the, the lockdown, the NDC today um, has said quite a number of things re relating to the lockdown. First of all, it's saying that the lockdown, the partial lockdown that was done, has backfired. It doesn't believe we achieved the aim we wanted. Uh, and then secondly, it believes that um, other regions must also have the lockdown, especially regions that uh, there have been cases uh, reported. So the five regions we are seeing, of course, there's only two that we, we, we have the lockdown. It should extend to the likes of the eastern region and uh, the other up north regions that we're seeing with the COVID-19 uh, um, cases. Is it time to extend the uh, lockdown to those places or we should stick with the, the areas where it's really, really the red zones? I, I, I think it's, it's too early given that the lockdown has a lot of economic and social you know, implications. implications. I think it's, it's too early. We have Greater Accra and Greater Kumasi locked down. What are the other regions? Northern region, Upper West, and then Eastern. Yeah. What are the cases there? Eastern region, we have this one case. Mm -hmm. I'm sure contact tracing is ongoing. Yeah. We've not established yet that 
other cases have proven it positive there. So for now, we just know of one case. Um, I don't really know the history of that case, but just one case for now. Upper West region, we, we just have one case. Uh, Northern region, Tamale, we have just one ten. case. Yeah, we have like ten, 10 cases, cases yeah. now, nine, because Indians. one is escaped. Yeah. We don't know where that one is. The Northern region case is a bit different because these are people from some other place who got into the system. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many contacts they would have, they would have, they, 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 they would have made or they have made with the locals mm -hmm. but i don't think it is time yet because it is not widespread if you had recorded let's say five to ten cases in any of those regions and they are local people or there are people who have moved around a bit then maybe this call for um, lockdown in those regions could be justified but right now i think it is way too early especially given the fact that we appear to now have a proper understanding of the situation and as information minister said today we are actually trying to chase you know the disease rather than the disease chasing us i think it will be too early and, and, and too much of an ask to want to lock down the the, the three other regions i certainly think it's, it's not yet time for that okay but, time but, for Marcelo, i i foresee this lockdown coming the general lockdown coming, but the, be, be, yeah. and, and and I think if if, if it can be done immediately, it should be done immediately. Yes, the, the, the yes, whole because place, all these regions affected. In the northern region, when did the lady get missing? When did she run away from okay. from the holding place? It's been over twenty-four hours, mm -hmm. forty-eight mm -hmm. hours. More than forty-eight hours. Yeah. We've still not located her, mm -hmm. and she is positive. It's not that she is negative. We've not not located her. She is positive. And the kind of lockdown we have, you cannot drive into greater Accra. You cannot drive into Ashanti region. You cannot drive outside. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. there is freedom within the other regions. Mm -hmm. Is that not so? Mm -hmm. For you to move from the Bono region to the Afro region or those things. So, this person could be anywhere. That's 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 my fear. If somebody is missing and 48 hours on, we've not found the person. The person could be anywhere. And this is a person who has tested positive. Mm -hmm. So I feel that. We should lock down the regions the same way we've locked down Ashanti region and Greater Accra. But, but look, so, so, so Northern region, <coughs> yes, but even with Northern region, I don't think so yet because we have it contained in some sense. Just one person is run away. Yeah. Eastern region has just one case. Upper West has just one case, and these cases have been isolated and they have been managed. To lock down these regions because of one one cases at this time. I, I think it will be. With, with what we've seen in the Ashanti region and the Greater Accra region, we've locked Greater Accra region up, up, right? But people are able to move. Mm -hmm. If you lock the northern region up and you say nobody should move from Savannah region into northern region, nobody should move from northern region to northeast, to upper east, upper west. Nobody should be moving. So everybody from, should stay in their so region. So, so that's a certain kind of, that's yes, certain kind of lockdown. That, that's so. the type of lockdown I'm talking about. Okay. So every region remains. Nobody crosses any boundary mm -hmm. except essential stuff. Mm -hmm. like food trucks mm -hmm. um, cargo vehicles and they'll be they'll be screened at the exit points and the entry points i think that will help because this lady who who, who, who ran away and we mm -hmm. still haven't found her it's something that scares me mm -hmm. and anybody who has information to share with the security agencies they should share there, there, there were uh, questions about whether we shouldn't put up a picture if we have it to help trace this lady, do, do for example, have, do you even have their that, pictures? That's a, the, 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 another question. If well, we well, have it, why if, not if put it up? They were in a group, yeah. and I just hope that as a group, maybe they had pictures. Mm -hmm. If she has a phone, and we have the phone number, and it's a Ghana number, or it's a number that ported into our system, maybe yeah. the telcos could help us locate the yeah. person. Yeah. But as long as that person is missing and we cannot find the person, I believe that there should be a stringent lock lockdown of every region so that you don't move from region to region and especially the northern region we should restrict movement as much as possible within the northern region so that we do not see any spread because one person affects another affects and then another, that's it affects, and there's a chain reaction being set up. okay talking about the 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 marks we we're talking about earlier um if you look at um, the the bbc's lead story for today this afternoon actually it's talking about the fact that the u.s is set to recommend the wearing of marks and let me just go quickly through that story now it says the white house is expected to advise americans um, in coronavirus hotspots to wear cloth masks 
or scarves in public to help stop the virus spread. Now, President Donald Trump said such an advisory will not be mandatory. Residents of New York, the epicenter of countries, even in the West, the, you know, the crowded areas. New York is, can be pretty crowded, you know, every second and all that pushing for the wearing of the mask because it's quite impossible to do the social distancing and all that at this very uh, point, isn't it? Yeah, so, so you see, so the world, I think WHO from the beginning, at the beginning said wearing face masks wasn't very necessary. Uh, yeah, or in, that's true in, in the, the beginning. circumstances. Mm -hmm. But I think the world, coronavirus, I mean, we are still getting to understand it itself. So, you know, at some point we were told it wasn't airborne. At some point we were told there is droplet, droplet infection. It can aerosol. Uh, uh, I mean, it forms like an aerosol. So mm -hmm. aerosolizes, you know, and, and all kinds of things. I don't think that we should, as you say, lose guard. If wearing of mask can do something little to add to our layers of protection, let's do it. So the U.S., like you said, Donald Trump, is now looking at that to make it mandatory mm. for you know highly or densely populated areas i think we should start the discussion around that it is really really important especially in areas where it is practically difficult to 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 enforce this social distancing thing i think it's the way the world must go and look at videos or news items from asia mm -hmm. asia they've dealt with a few things um the uh, sars and a few other things so for them, a lot of them wear the mask. Yeah, marks, yeah. And I don't know if that could even add to the, the reason why their caps are declining. Of course, they've done a lot of other things. But who knows, doing this adds to the, the, the slowing down of the spread. I think it's something we should start looking at. Our authorities must also start looking at. Only that the fear is that because a lot of these face masks, etc., are in short supply, I mean, you, you, may, you may create something else. But it's a discussion that in Ghana we should also start engaging in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Trump says the wearing of face masks is just advisory, not mandatory. Mm -hmm. But I think it should be mandatory it should be. for them. And it should be mandatory in Ghana. Mm -hmm. If anybody is going out, if you have to step out, you need to have a face mask. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. If you must step up, you, step need, to out, you, need, to have you don't need to mask. get like we said earlier the very yes, you, medical you need ones, to have some form of face mask sort of a scarf or because something. we are not used to um coughing and covering our, our mouths and we are not used to look in ghana when somebody sneezes what's what's what's, the, what's what do we say a like, oh god bless you bless you <laughs> well, that's said everywhere i mean if you drop less. But, but my point is <laughs> now when you sleep go run away yes we've we've over the years not seen sneezing as something that could put us at risk <laughs> <laughs> but now it's something that puts us at, at risk, right? Yeah. So let's let's make it mandatory for people stepping out. If you are leaving your house, we know from all the analysis we've done that if you are leaving your house, then you are getting into the front line, mm -hmm. right? So why should you be in the front line without a PPE? Yeah. And the basic of the PPE is a face mask. So I believe that everybody stepping out must have some form of face mask, whether it's this type, that type, whether it's from your cloth, whether it's your scarf, have a primary protection which helps you to protect others and which helps you to protect yourself okay we have a few minutes to end so I want you to give your assessment for this week over the whole how we've treated this pandemic uh, you can bring in the lockdown whichever angle do you want to uh, look at and where the challenges are and what we can do to make it better as we go into the weekend and prepare for another week of lockdown this week has been um, quite stressful um, for a lot of Ghanaians, especially those who didn't experience the cools and the 84 hunger and all those things. <laughs> Did you experience it? Well, we were close <laughs> to it. You, you, you stories. <laughs> yes, <sorry. laughs> we were close to it. So, and I've, I've, I've experienced quite a few curfews okay. in my life. Okay. So, but for a lot of people who have not experienced that, they are really feeling it. For the elderly, the, the the lockdown and the fact that we don't have church services and going to the mosque and all these social events is also affecting some of them yeah. because for a lot of them those were the few opportunities they got to socialize meet their friends meet people meet their grandchildren and all mm -hmm. those so it's affecting some of them so generally it's having a toll on us it's having a toll on work it's having a toll on uh, people's sleep because some people cannot sleep they are not used to staying at home all day, mm -hmm. working from home. We are all trying to understand and adjust to the systems. There have been some flaws which 
we can we, we we can for now pardon but going forward if it continues we we will not pardon like the transportation thing for um healthcare yeah, uh, workers. Yeah, workers they are our key assets to deal with this so any planning should take their welfare into consideration so we must plan for them and vivian i'm i'm happy to say that city tv will be making available free buses beginning monday for health workers right mm. yes city tv will be making available um free buses beginning monday so we know the routes from so monday people, to friday yeah. we are we are giving transportation to help uh, okay. routes. so amasaman to achimota hospital mm -hmm. to circle wow. to ridge hospital wow. to princess marie hospital wow. to kolibu wow that is one route. and what time do you have a time we, we have now? different times so okay. in the morning there will be two uh, different shadows for the morning first bus second bus in the afternoon two in the evening two wow. so what's going to happen is that it brings people to work mm -hmm. then it takes people home then it brings people to work takes people home in the afternoon we are going to do the same thing so those on the amasaman route we are we will publish this on our website and on social okay. media okay. and also on radio for you to know Beautiful. where you can catch the bus so amasaman achimota hospital circle ridge hospital princess marie kolibu now there's the kaswa route mm -hmm. so kaswa to kanishi polyclinic to kolebu to ridge hospital to 37 military hospital that is also one route mm -hmm. that um city tv is going to take care of there's also the ai mensa mm -hmm. Pantai hospital legon hospital 37 hospital ridge hospital and the kolebu route lovely and there's the sakumono mm -hmm. route i'll just come well. to fight to die yes. i'm not here in my line <laughs> okay so give us the sakumono route. there is the sakumono to lekma hospital okay. to the la general hospital 37 ridge hospital and the kolebu route and Will be made. So if you're a healthcare worker, be in your uniform, have your ID, free transportation Monday to Friday. Um, we'll take you to work, we'll take you home, we'll practice um, physical distancing in the buses, and we'll make sure that the stress you've had to deal with this week, you don't have to deal with again next week. Okay, I'm told that the departure is 6.30 a.m. Nice. for all routes. So mm -hmm. departure is 6.30 a.m. This is fantastic. I'm yeah. proud to be it, part of this family. No, it, it's, it's super. <laughs> and, and, and that's what leadership is yeah. all about. Uh, and I think that's what a lot of the private um, institutions should be doing. Super, super, super yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I think it will help alleviate a lot of this, the, the struggles of the healthcare yes. workers who don't yes. have their own yeah. means of transport. Yeah. Yeah. Even those who have their own means of transport, sometimes it's stressful driving, even though now there's no traffic, but mm -hmm. you know, they can also join and, and, and it's all the better. The, the, the other thing in conclusion I want to talk about has to do with the social protection bit we keep talking about. Last night, very late in the night, after 10 p.m. I was driving home, at the Silver Star traffic light, these young boys who clean the windscreen etc we're still there at the time mm -hmm. you know begging almost kneeling down for coins and things we've been told that there's a plan for social protection kai and other yeah. underprivileged groups this is the time we must reach out to them and take them off the streets because we don't even know what they are carrying they've been interfacing with a lot of people mm -hmm. take them off the streets and help them so we, we, we cross this, okay. if we can help them forever. All right. Thank you guys so much. Kojia Kotobwa, the head of research um, here at City FM and City TV. And Salam Adonu, head of articles and features also here at City FM and City TV. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. Thank you so much for joining us. And for Monday, if you're a health um, care provider, from 6.30, we have five routes. We're going to put that on social media. We'll be announcing it on TV, radio, everywhere for you to see which places you can join these buses and get to work to provide care for us. And thank you so much for providing care for us all throughout this period. We're really proud of you. We want to say thank you from us. Have a lovely um, day. Goodbye.